Thank you everyone who's starting to join us. We're gonna wait a few more seconds while more folks get on. Okay, everyone, we're starting to get up to a good mass. Um, we'll start slowly here while a few more folks join, but thank you so much for joining us today for SBP's webinar on getting yourself prepared for winter weather. My name is Helen Wiley. I'm our Disaster Preparedness Program Director, and I'm joined by my colleague, Tessa Barron, who's our Prepare Program Associate, and we'll be tag teaming this webinar today. A few housekeeping notes as we get going. This webinar is being recorded. So if you have to jump off, um, you know, before the 20 minute presentations up, we will be sending it out to you. Um, and you can of course distribute it to others as well. Um, second, if you have any questions, please add them into the Q&A box and we will take all questions at the end of the presentation. With that, if you're not familiar with SBP, we're a national nonprofit organization with the mission of shrinking the time between disasters and recovery. We work all across the disaster cycle and have five different interventions, one of which is our preparedness program, which is bringing you this webinar today. We have a lot of great resources that cover disaster topics, um, in, you know, including winter storms, um, but you can find those resources at sbpusa.org, prepare a natural disaster, or through our Equip mobile app. And then finally, as we get into the content, I want to ask everyone to please consider taking our really quick one minute survey at the end of this um, session today, you'll be entered to in to receive a, um, a raffle ticket for a $25 Visa gift card that we'll be raffling out to folks that attended the call today. So um, please consider doing that. Um, it's, it's, you know, we hope it's a good incentive um, and it gives us a lot of great data as we think about what information is most helpful for you and what other topics you'd want to learn about. So as a starting point, I'm going to share, you know, a story of one of our clients at SBP that we've done um, rebuilding for that have been impacted by a winter storm in the Houston, Texas area a year or two back. And really want you to think about this, you know, in the tips and um, information we're sharing today as, as a reason why it's so important to be better prepared for winter weather and, um, you know, freezing events. So one of our clients, Miss Coleman, is, you know, 77 years old. She, in preparation for a severe winter storm in the Houston area, had taken the important step of evacuating to her daughter's home. Um, so really key action there. But, you know, they lost electricity, um, but in any case remained safe. Unfortunately, though, Ms. Holman's own home really sustained major damage from the storm event. Numerous pipes froze, which is a major issue with winter storms. And when they froze, they burst, which left flood water everywhere in, in multiple parts of her home. An unfortunate reality is that um, homeowners insurance typically does not cover the cost of flood damage. So she did have, you know, coverage through her insurance company for the cost of fixing the pipes, but not getting, um, you know, money to help actually deal with the water damage. We'll circle back to some tips and, and things to consider um, um, later in this presentation. But, you know, the, the moral of the story here is that, you um, not having the necessary actions taken and necessary funds available to deal with 
the um, damage from the frozen pipes made her recovery really challenging. And fortunately, Ms. Holman found her way to us. And um, we, through philanthropic dollars, were able to help her get back into her home and um, repair the damage. But, you know, again, you want to be able to deal with the damage and consequences very quickly or ideally prevent them to begin with because in her case, mold grew in the impacted areas, which made um, sections of her home unlivable. Um, so really hope that that'll ground us all as we deal with some winter storm tips today um, because Mrs. Holman and, and all of our clients and other folks in um, the disaster space would really not want you to go through um, a similar experience. So really quickly here, I want to step back and just say, you know, while we're focusing on winter storm preparedness today, to know that our risks are changing for various types of extreme weather events. So floods are getting more intense and frequent, wildfires, hurricanes. Um, and so our top recommendation is to look up your address at riskfactor.com. It is a nonprofit organization that has some of the best data out there for understanding your risks for natural disaster events. And you can type in either your address or your zip code and get your risk score for a wildfire or for um, heat or wind or um, flood event. So really go and check that out. But when we think particularly about winter storms, you know, first I want to just make sure we're all on the same page. Winter storms are what occur when precipitation forms as sleet or snow or when rain turns to ice. And as I was just saying, you know, um, you know, our risks are changing of when things occur. And so no matter where you're located in the United States, you need to be um, prepped for severe winter weather occurring from early fall to late spring. You know, we're seeing freezes or fluke, um, um, you know, um, snow events happen at different periods. And importantly, these winter storms can immobilize an entire region. Um, and, you know, this can be for only several hours, grinding um, car traffic and everything else to a halt. Or they can last several days with, you know, you needing to be planning to be at home for a week or more if, if roads are impassable. And so um, being prepared that you could lose heat and power and communication through cell phones is really important. A couple of key facts here. Again, we really want to encourage folks to stay off the roads when there's severe winter weather. Um, importantly, unfortunately, about 70% of injuries related to ice or snow occur in cars. And so again, you know, stay off the road if you can. Um, and second, you know, really avoid going outside when it's it's really bad um, cold or icy weather because about 25% of people that get injuries are those that are caught out in the storm. Um, next is, you know, thinking about communication, where you're going to get information is really important. And so get, you know, tuned into what are your different local weather apps? Um, what are the news stations you can rely on if you don't use a TV? Um, you know, also purchase a NOAA weather radio, a radio that you can put batteries into because if you lose power, um, you, you know, may not be able to get information um, through other means. And so a NOAA weather radio will enable you to keep getting updates. Third, I want to, you know, quickly go over the terms here. You might get um, emergency warnings on your phone or in the TV about different types of warnings or alerts, watches when there's different severe weather events in your area. And so most importantly is for winter storms, when there's a warning that's put out, that means that a winter storm is either occurring or imminent. And so you really need to find shelter right away. That being said, a watch, an advisory also means that you need to proceed very cautiously because, for instance, a winter storm is possible. And so you want to, you know, get to shelter, get any resources that you need before going home as quickly as possible so that you're not having to go back out into the storm. 
with that, you know, I'm going to go into a few tips here on making your plan. So this really involves, you know, making sure you've got supplies in advance in your home so that you don't have to go out when things are starting to get bad, making sure that you're making a plan of, you know, how you're going to communicate with loved ones if cell service is down, you know, having a, a NOAA radio, as I was just describing, so that you um, can keep getting weather updates and making a plan of, you know, are you going to stay at home or are you going to go to the um, home of a loved one or a neighbor because they might have a generator or because, you know, um, um, ex family member or friend um, um, shouldn't be left alone. And so you're going to plan to stay together. Um, so thinking through those things is really important. And there's, there's some great resources on our website to take you through making your larger preparedness plan and, and fill out information. So we'd encourage you to check those out and we can send um, those to you in the webinar chat as well. When we think about what types of supplies you should get together for, um, you know, any type of emergency event, but in particular a winter storm, I want to call your attention to a few different things here. First off, in terms of, you know, food and, and bottled water, you need to plan that for each member of your household you have a gallon of water per day available. Um, so, you know, one gallon a person. So if there's three people in your household, that means three gallons of water for each day. And you should be planning to have, you know, um, really ideally a two week water supply. So, you know, multiply that out. Um, but also think about, you know, if you have pets in your home, you need additional water available for them each day. Um, you need um, to think about anything special for infants or, you know, um, family members um, with certain prescriptions in terms of having additional supplies available if you can't leave your home for an extended period. Um, second, you know, again, if you lose power, you're going to need different um, sources of light. And so having extra batteries in your home, making sure they work for any flashlights you have, um, additionally for, you know, radios. Um, and then having things like, again, having extra blankets around, extra layers, keeping some of these in your car as well. So in case you get caught out in a storm and um, have to actually shelter in your vehicle for a period of time, making sure that you have extra layers there to help yourself as well. We'll go into more detail on generators and, um, you know, again, budget-friendly ways to get generators. But um, for winter storms, having a generator, um, this can be a portable one, one that you share with um, neighbors, um, is really important given the likelihood of losing power for at least a portion of time. Um, and so um, really high priority item. Then again, you know, eventually you need to think through having safe walkways for um, getting out of your home. And so having a shovel, ice scraper, um, you know, um, salt melt, et cetera, is, is important as well. Second, again, if you were to um, get stuck in your vehicle somewhere, making sure that you have jumper cables in your car, um, as well as a toolkit and other basic um, preparedness um, um, things is really important for kind of a secondary car kit. We know that, you know, preparing for events um, it can be challenging, but it's so much better to um, take some steps to, you know, buy different um, um, items in advance to help you be better prepared um, since disasters can be so costly when they occur. And so a couple tips we'd give you for some of the different items we described, you know, getting extra flashlights, batteries, um, jumper cables is, you know, one, if you're on a tight budget, spread out your purchases, you know, think through what items are most high priority for you and um, buy them gradually over time so that you don't have a ton of purchases at once. Second, you know, think through different um, places locally that can help you save on the costs of supplies. So, you know, know what are different um, 
um, dollar stores and, and um, you know, budget friendly stores in your area that you can check at periodically for if they have a particular item available. Um, also look at your local secondhand stores to see what they have, you know, periodically that comes in, like getting um, additional layers that you can keep in your car um, very cheaply. Um, you can also take advantage of sales tax holidays. So look up in your state of, you know, what are the different um, tax-free days that might be available throughout the year. And so for a larger purchase item like um, a generator, that might be a great time to um, purchase that item, for instance. And then also, you know, reach out to faith-based groups in your area, volunteer organizations, emergency management, you know, and see if there are any um, emergency preparedness items that they have available for free or at a very low cost. Um, some emergency management departments, you know, do offer, for instance, like safety kits um, for free to um, folks in their communities. And then, as I mentioned, you know, we have um, larger information and packets available on our website for you to create your emergency plan. But I want to cover a couple tips here as you think about winter weather in particular. One, you know, if you need to go out in your car, um, it's really important just broadly to keep your vehicle in good working condition so that it will function well if and when there is bad weather if you need to go out. Having your separate emergency kit in the car is really important. And you want to make sure you have a full tank of gas so that if you need to, you know, if you're stuck on the highway, stuck somewhere for an extended period, you're able to keep the heat running for longer um, um, versus, you know, getting stuck in really freezing conditions. But again, it's really, really critical to avoid driving during winter storms unless absolutely necessary. So take those warnings, advisories, um, alerts that go out in your area seriously. Then in terms of home tips, um, you want to check your emergency supplies annually. So particularly thinking about non-perishable cans and food items, um, your you know, how much water you have, switching it out of what's in gallon um, sized jugs, et cetera, so that it's fresh, checking your battery supplies and all those things. And then again, you know, recognize that since um, communication might go out, making a plan with your neighbors for how you're, you'll help one another or share certain resources is really important. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Tessa, to share a few additional tips, particularly on protecting your home and preventing things like pipes freezing. Thanks so much, Helen, and good afternoon, everyone. So we're going to look at how to prepare our homes in three different categories. And so first, we'll be looking at a handful of inspections and maintenance actions. And this is really true across the board for the disasters that we talk about at SVP, that if you're proactive in keeping your house in good repair and regularly inspecting your property, then you will save money in the long run because that's going to enable you to catch smaller things quickly and make repairs before they become very costly and much more expensive than they otherwise would have been. These more minor uh, maintenance-related repairs are, are what we'd really rather be dealing with as opposed to storm-related damage, which can be more expensive. So that's the first bucket uh, of actions to protect our households. And the second is, you know, we're going to talk about um, our pipes. And we're looking at a really unique situation here with winter storms and freezing weather because you know, these really cold temperatures, they can have an impact on our indoor plumbing and they can freeze our pipes. So we'll walk through some specific things in just a slide or two here that we can do to avoid that. But then we'll also cover some tips for what we can do if, if your pipes are frozen, if you find yourself in that situation and you need to go through um, an exercise of thawing out and unfreezing those pipes. But just in short, to, to preview for us what, what that'll look like, to make sure that our pipes don't freeze, our solution here is to take um, an inventory of any pipes that are located in your home in um, areas that are cooler, unheated areas. So maybe we're looking at attics or basements or crawl spaces, et cetera, and adding insulation to those areas so they can maintain those temperatures that are necessary to keep all well, the water flowing and to avoid freezing. Um, and then our third topic that we'll dive into is 
um, looking at you know how we can set ourselves up for safety in the event that you lose power. So talking about considerations with generators and other backup power sources and having those at the ready. Next slide, please. Uh, so again, um, with these regular inspections and maintenance, uh, these I, the idea here is that you know, we really want to catch things early on and before they get very costly. So some quick and easy actions that you can take are, are simply in advance, testing your smoke alarms, your carbon mono uh, monoxide detectors, just to make sure that they are working properly in, go in good condition. And then also checking out your furnace filter and changing that out if need be. There are other actions that we have uh, bucketed out on the bottom that you may want to consider bringing in a professional. So things like checking the state of the insulation throughout the home and making sure that your house is properly weatherized. And um, weatherized just means that the home, uh, the home's interior is protected from outside elements. And then, of course, also checking your heating system and water heating to make sure that they are in good condition. We also want to make sure that what gets included in here is taking a look at the roof, whether that's something that you are doing or if you're bringing in a professional, um, and just to inspect that and make sure that it's in good condition. The one thing to emphasize here, though, is that if, if this is something that you do feel that you need to bring in a professional for, that's completely okay. We'd much rather make sure um, you know that it's done right. But the critical piece here is that we need to have planning in advance that lines up the timing so that in the event that a professional does find various things throughout your home that need to be fixed or updated, you have enough time to make those repairs before you're in the thick of winter weather. So really speaks to the importance of planning in advance and lining up that timing. Next slide, please. So moving along to pipe protection, as you'll remember with Ms. Holloman's story in the beginning of the presentation, we really don't want to deal with flooding from pipes that have frozen and then um, have burst. And so some things that we can do to avoid that are to crank up the temperature in our home, um, open up cabinets, and, and we're doing that to make sure that the warm air circulates and reaches those pipes that are in those colder um, locations throughout our home. And I did make note of this before, so I'll just say briefly again that for those pipes that are in colder locations, crawl spaces, attics, et cetera, to insert insulation around them so they can maintain that good temperature. We at SVP, well, we certainly are, um, are advocates of being good environmental stewards. However, if you know that your pipes are prone to freezing, turning on the faucets and letting them run um, just, a, just a trickle, not um, at, at full blast, but just letting them run at a little trickle is going to uh, certainly help avoid um, a freezing situation. And then lastly here, heading outside and draining your outdoor supply lines. If you do find yourself in a situation that you are dealing with frozen pipes, uh, some quick tips here are again to increase the temperature and then also to apply heat to the frozen sections of the pipes. And there are many ways that that can be done um, using space heater or a heat lamp or wrapping a, an um, electronic heating pad or heating tape around the frozen section or even soaking a towel in hot water and putting that on the frozen section many different ways that you can go about doing that, but we just want to make sure that in order to do it in the most safe way, we're avoiding any type of open flame devices and uh, thawing out the pipes um, in a, a, a slower fashion. Next slide, please. I'm going to take a moment here just to talk very briefly about being prepared and, and knowing what to do during a power outage. And this is really so important because power outages can happen with any type of storm event. So actions that we had, had talked about before, like testing your fire alarms and your carbon monoxide detectors are smaller and, and quick actions that you can take to really um, ensure that you are being as safe as you can possibly be. And then also identifying in advance what backup power source you'll use and having it ready at a moment's notice is key here. 
And one thing that we always do like to highlight here is that in the event that you're dealing with a power outage, it's it's really critical to your safety that um, you're never using a gas stovetop um, or an oven to heat your home. So just want to emphasize that there. Next slide, please. So this is a story that we wanted to highlight for you all today that speaks to the importance of, well, overall preparedness, but specifically it ties in really nicely to um, power outages and, and things that you'll want to consider. And so this is a story of a family that lived just outside of D.C., and they were in an area that, unfortunately, frequently, whenever there was an extreme type of disaster event or extreme weather, they lost power. And despite that they knew that, they unfortunately were not proactive in ensuring that they were prepared. So this family dealt with a, a severe storm event, um, a severe winter storm event, and, and it was really problematic in this one specific case scenario because, well, their house was entirely electric. Um, so, of course, you know, that means they lost access to, to any lights, refrigeration, heat, and they had a one-year-old. And because of the inclement weather, they were not able to get on the road to get what they needed. And so this story has a, a happy ending, thankfully, because their neighbor was able to step in and provide support and help them. Um, they were able to plug in through an extension cord to their neighbor's generator and, and um, have a space heater for one room in their house where they rode out the storm together. But again, this story is really important in emphasizing some key takeaways, which are it's critical to get prepared for power outages in advance and think through what energy needs you might have um, in, in an emergency event and how you're going to make sure that you're safeguarded against or for that. Um, and also, this does tie in the importance of having your disaster supplies kits fully stocked in the event that you are home and you can't get on the roads. And then also including in your emergency plan, uh, communications with your fam, family, friends, neighbors, loved ones, and um, to that communication piece as a whole. Next slide, please. And the last thing that we're gonna cover today is um, uh, purchasing a generator and, and general considerations here. While generators are certainly expensive, Installing them can be absolutely a life-saving measure if someone in your household is sensitive to cold temperatures. When we follow up after the presentation today, we'll send some resources, including the two listed out here, and we highly encourage you to check those out. Um, but at a high level, if you want to start looking into purchasing a generator, things that are important to consider are getting an understanding of um, your power priorities. So determining what appliances that you're are really going to be essential that you'll need and you'll want to maintain during a power outage. So think of things like um, re refrigerators, portable heaters, lights, um, some pumps and things of that nature. And this is so important because the amount of energy that you're going to need during a power outage from an alternative backup source, that's going to dictate which generator is going to best meet your needs. I want to highlight here and emphasize for you that there are different types of generators, including um, or permanent fixed ones, but often we'll see generators come um, in a portable fashion rather than um, whole house generators, though those are available too. But again, portable are a bit more common. We also want folks to um, keep at the forefront of their minds that um, while these are certainly expensive, um, and looking at things like maybe Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist for potentially cheaper options is certainly something that we want you to consider. And then the last tidbit of information on generators and really on how to make sure that your house is protected as a whole is generator safety. Unfortunately, winter storms, they do create a higher risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. So it's crucial to understand um, generator safety and you know how you can use this tool to best serve your family's needs in a safe um, and appropriate way. Um, and so we'll we'll wrap up here and go to our Q&A session for the sake of time. Um, but we really do appreciate everyone joining us today and, and listening in on some key actions that can be taken to get yourself more prepared, to reduce your risks, and to ensure your safety throughout this, um, this winter season.
Oh, and just very briefly before we jump into any questions that folks have, I encourage you to, um, to take our survey. It's very brief, about one minute, and folks that do respond, um, again, will get thrown into a raffle and we'll be choosing a winner that will receive a $25 gift card. So again, we hope that encourages folks to take our survey and, and we really appreciate anyone that has the time to, um, to do that. Thanks, Tessa. And, um, you know, please, again, um, feel free to put any additional questions in the Q&A box. I'm also putting here in the webinar chat our email address if you'd like to reach out to us individually. Um, my colleague Tessa will put um, as well the um, um, survey link in the chat box, but you can also use your phone to scan the code that we have on the screen to pull the survey up and it should take you less than a minute to fill out. Um, but to go over really quickly the questions that um, folks had poised, one, um, we will be sharing out this recording in a follow-up email along with different resources that we mentioned. Um, so please feel free to see that email for you know further engagement. You can forward it to other people as well. Um, thank you. The one um, link was incorrect, and so we'll we'll send a correct link in our follow-up email. And then third, you know, we love hearing tips from folks. So um, one of you guys shared that the dollar store foam tube floaties work really well with tape around pipes to provide insulation. So that's a really great, you know, cost-effective way to um, create insulation for pipes in some of your high-risk areas. So thanks for sharing that tip. With that, unless we see any other questions show up in the chat in the next minute or so, we just want to thank everyone so much for joining us today um, to learn more about winter weather preparedness and um, get yourselves better equipped and, you know, share tips with loved ones and create plans with neighbors um, in case of severe weather this season. And with that, thank you all so much for joining Oop, I do see that there might be a couple more questions. Ah, I see one more question here. Um, how frequently should we recommend to homeowners they inspect the home for maintenance? Thanks, Deanna, for that question. So ideally, you know, we should really be doing um, annual inspections. Um, that's, that's the general guidance is that, you know, you should have your furnace, for instance, checked every year in the fall. Um, I think the reality of course, is that, that, you know, may not be cost effective and, and feasible for all homeowners, um, particularly those that are on limited budgets, but, um, you know, ideally really want to recommend to folks that, um, they should check things yearly just because again, as any appliance, um, um, gets older, there are more things that, um, emerge. And so, you know, you want to do, um, the preventative work, which is doing yearly inspections and maintenance for different um, critical parts of your home because this will prevent much larger costs should a disaster event occur. Okay, well, thank you everyone so much for joining and we'll be sending out the recording and please continue engaging with SBP on all of our different trainings and resources available and reach out to us at our prepare at sbpusa.org email address if you have any additional questions and please take our survey as well. Thank you all so much and have a good rest of the day.